So in this video, we're going to take a peek at computational thinking. I'm just going to scroll right back up to the organization of the standards for us to take a quick peek at the four sub-concept areas and how the standards are broken down. And then we'll dive right into uh, what these standards are actually asking us to do. So in computational thinking, there are four sub-concept areas. One standard is in modeling and simulation. Two are in uh, data analysis and visualization. Two of them are in abstraction and decomposition. And then we get to this big one. Look, you have one, two, three, four, five standards that are within algorithms and programming. Uh, what's nice about this, though, is a lot of what these standards are asking us to do are things that you're already doing in your class. And it might just need a, a slight tweak or uh, maybe be a little bit more in depth in order to make sure we don't water down the standard, but we're making sure to hit them within our ELA classroom. So now I'm gonna scroll down to page 24 of the PDF. So if you have that handy, you can follow along. And what we're going to do again is take a look at the standards and kind of take a look at what they're asking across K-12. Please take the time to pause the video and read the standard and the clarifying statement that is below the standard for each of these for your grade band and then either the ones above or below or both if, you, if, they, if that makes sense for you to be able to see what the students are going to need to know. So the first standard here, standard one, is modeling and simulation. And in this standard, we're really thinking about recognizing patterns that exist uh, in order to predict and evaluate a data, data set. So we do patterns a lot in lots of different classes, especially in math and science. But we'll talk about how that can look or what that can look like in our English class as well. As we go into uh, the standard two for data, this is the first one for data analysis and uh, a visualization. Here we're thinking about how we can collect and use data. Moving into the next one for data analysis and visualization, we're thinking about visualizing a data set to inform or persuade an audience. We definitely write lots of essays that have to do with uh, it to inform or persuade an audience. So here we're thinking about it in terms of just collecting the data and what we're going to write about it. So you can start to see that correlation with ELA. It happens pretty quickly. As we get into abstraction and decomposition, we're talking about decomposing or breaking down and identifying any repetition. That's the abstraction for efficiency. So uh, when I taught sixth grade, I used to say we're going to, uh, to pull apart our essay and make sure we don't have extra fluff that we don't need. That's what we're talking about here is really pulling apart the parts that you need to make sure people can understand what we wrote and then um, think about what needs to uh, be streamlined in order for it to be understood. The next one for abstraction and decomposition is uh, standard five. This one is thinking about complex systems that are made up of multiple, multiple layers of lesser complex steps. So again, you're pulling apart the parts to be able to build something. So, uh, you know, you might say to your students, we're going to write a three page essay, which sounds so overwhelming for, for certain students. But as you start to pull it down and say, you're going to have, you know, two paragraphs uh, that cover this and two more paragraphs that cover that, and you start to break it apart into uh, different parts or you're dividing as if they're collaborating on it, different people are doing different parts of the research or whatever it is they're doing. Then all of a sudden you start to say, all right, I'm already doing that in my classroom. I might just have to start to use some of that terminology to give it that computational thinking lens. As we get into uh, standard six, we're getting into algorithms. Here we're talking about how we can study, create, design, and describe an algorithm. So this is really just following a task. So in our English class, we might do how-to essays, recipe building, origami, anything where we're going to talk about a step-by-step, -step, um, how-to guides, um, you know, anything along those lines, we're really thinking about it for ELA. Here would be really nice if we did uh, use some sort of uh, coding program or something along those lines to really uh, bring, bring, bring that bridge or, or to create that bridge. Um, but at least at the, at the basics, you know that if you're doing some sort of writing that they have to follow a step-by-step -step process, um, you're already starting to, uh, to hit the standard. As you get into your high school grades, that's where you're really thinking about um, that compare and contrast. So, um, and even in the seventh, eighth, they, they mentioned the word compare in there too, and all the way through um, from fourth grade up. This could be those Venn diagrams, T charts, and different things like that, where we are comparing and contrasting some information. Our next one is uh, standard seven in algorithms and programming. 
here we're looking at creating, comparing, and analyzing those at uh, those algorithms. So really diving even deeper into them. So instead of just comparing and contrasting, we're identifying um, certain parts that actually change and how um, you know the data is being used. So they've done a big research project on something, and they're really going to be writing about what they learned from that process. Um, and that's really going to be something that becomes uh, a part of what we're talking about with standard seven. Standard eight is still within algorithms, uh, and here we're still talking about um, a lot of the algorithms, but we're thinking about how we can modify them in order to solve a problem. So uh, when we have our students uh, do different things with um, with writing, you might have them come up with their solution, what they think is a solution, but then you want them to see it from a different perspective, um, or they need to repeat uh, to see if they get the same outcome. So uh, a lot of this can be done through repetition, uh, the idea of loops. Uh, do we have to talk about Booleans <laughs> in our English class? Uh, maybe, maybe we don't want to, but we can certainly talk about the societal issues that have to do with computer programming and uh, what the intended use is compared to what actually happened. So we could be writing about some of those complex uh, concepts that algorithms and programs can programming can bring about. As we get into the last couple ones for uh, algorithms and programming, we're in standard nine and ten. Nine is saying uh, uh, utilize a program to label data in multiple ways. So how are we going to showcase how we um, have created something? What are we going to debug or correct or retest and refine? Um, to make sure that it that it can be uh, that it's something that can use so uh, here is really that editing process that we often do and then finally for 10 uh, we're really thinking about designing and developing our own programs and then outlining the steps to complete it so uh, the students have done some research they come up with some ideas and now they're going to showcase how it actually works so this could be the conclusion part of your essay so hopefully Going through this is helping you kind of see what it could look like. I just gave some quick examples for essay writing and for, um, you know, some different things you could do in the classroom. In the, in the next uh, module, we'll really dive into what it could actually look like even beyond the essay.